and welcome back to redheart.com as well as the crochet crowd i'm your host mikey and in today's tutorial we are going to work on this fabulous fabulous throw i'm so excited about this this is called the peppermint throw and oh, it is the most amazing thing i've ever seen so what we're going to be doing today i'm going to shrink myself right now and around me you can see all the different menu options if you'd like to fast forward to a certain part of this tutorial you can do so now just click on the motif that you would like to do next so just a brief explanation right above me is all the motifs all 42 of them start off the same way from but there are six ways to finish you'll have to read the instructions to be able to figure out how many you need to do but of course in the tutorial I'll tell you that as we go along so you can fast forward to all the different motifs to finish and then of course we have the smaller motif which you'll have to fit in between if I were you and you were me I would totally do all 42 of the motifs at the same time from rounds number 1 to 10 and securely fasten off and leave round number 11 to the very end so once you have your 42 then you you know how many you have to make it's in the instructions on, on how many a motif 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 and I would do each one of those at the exact same time because it's easier to remember the pattern as you're working on it so why is there motifs 1 to 6 anyway you really have to look at this afghan because what you'll notice is that this here is motif number one and this is motif number two but look at the difference see the uh, the pink and the red those are color b do you see that they're not in the same position so when they go together that they're not identical so what the designer has done here with all of the motifs is that even from motifs three and four and then five and six is that she has changed the corner slightly so that each one of the interior of the pinwheels falls in a different place to keep the spiraling effect going and because of that that's why there's six now motifs one and two are the interior of this afghan and so every side will be attaching to a neighbor whether it's a square or another octagon now motifs three and four look like this and there is a difference because of the pinwheel as I've just explained in the last one for one and two and so these are the exterior but not the corner of the afghan so you'll notice that each one of these will attach to its neighbor in five spots but leaving like a semicircle at the bottom which is the exterior and three and four will always sit together and you'll notice that the pinwheels will never fall into the same position when they're sitting side by side and that's why there's three and four Here's the large motifs five and six and they're almost identical to each other. Again, the stopping and the starting places are really different within these ones here because of where they're following. So what happens with five and six is that they're attaching to the neighbor only in three sides, one, two, and three, and then one, two, and three. And then the rest of it around the side of the corner as it comes around the afghan is all just kind of rounded off. And that's why there is two different versions because in an actual fact, they're gonna be sitting beside different uh, motifs, therefore the pinwheel has been uh, honestly just moved over and so even if you put these two together as is right now you'll notice that the pinwheels don't follow into the same position and because of that that's why there's two different versions so that's why there's five and six and finally the last motif is the smallest one really no brainer really you'll whip these off in no time and you need 30 of these small little gadgets here you will notice that there's a beautiful little interior just like so and because of that it's just a really interesting and easy motif in order to do so let's examine what is on the back of these motifs next so I have motifs one and two and I want to turn them over just like so and the backs resemble almost like a stove top of an old coil stove and essentially I really needed to see that in order to really know how these stitches are working together this is exactly how they're working together is that the, the colors A and B are actually working independently of each other but are like crocheted in a way that they're sitting and resting in each other at no particular point except for the very beginning of the actual like the very center are they attached to each other in any way so not actually on the fact you can slip your hands in behind the chains that are jumping across because the reds are just kind of are just kind of resting in each other and because of the fact that it's just resting in each other it just provides a really great there's no color bleed and it makes for a very perfect pinwheel just like so so, so what I want to do for you now is that we're going to start this tutorial today and we're going to start off with doing rounds number one to ten which are the same across the board and then we're going to dive into the endings of all six and then at the very end of the tutorial that we'll get working on the small motif next. So. 
So let's begin this part of the tutorial and this is for rounds number 1 through 10 and this counts for all of the 42 versions. The only difference is, is that row number 11 will have a different edging. So this part of the tutorial is rows number 1 through 10 only. So what you have to decide first of all is the color. When you're looking at the two colors, color A is the exterior that it ends up being. So you'll have to decide what is going to be the dominant color and what is the inset color which is color B. So let's turn it over and take a closer look at the back just like you see here and you can see that all of the pinwheels so for example if you follow this up it's all just resting and basically it's all just chain work that is sitting there and so essentially they're working independently of each other when they're just sitting in two positions. So they're not actually attached to each other in the sense where you have to like slip stitch your yarn. So uh, it's a very easy process. The only thing is, is that getting started is a little difficult but once you understand how to get started you're going to find it it's actually a very easy process. The next key component is to understand that when you're doing these pinwheels you are always going to miss the very first one. The reason why it's having this twisting effect is that we're always going to skip the first double crochet regardless of what round you're on and that even includes the exterior edging. If you understand that then it becomes very easy. So when you're starting off a row it always says slip stitch to the next one over. That means that basically you are just getting to the second one and then you will see as you go in the pattern is that you're always going to skip the first one. Once you get that concept it's going to be really easy for you to be able to follow along with this particular motif. So you'll need to choose two colors and I'm going to use the green as my dominant color. It's actually a different shade than what was in the original. You can see here it's more lighter and more brighter. So what we're going to do is that we're going to create a slip knot first and just like so and we want to chain four. Okay, so remember that this never counts as one. So one, two, three, and four. And we want to create a slip or a slip stitch to the beginning chain. So just go into the beginning to form a ring. So just grab the yarn and pull through, and now you have the first one there. Did you notice how I just instantly grab this straggler and just put it around as if it's part of the round? It just makes it hide it when you go into the next. So let's begin the next part. With still using the green, we're going to do our first revolution around the ring. To start, we're going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. In the rules of double crochet, chaining of three counts as one, but we actually did an extra one because we're going to put a one a chain space in between all of the double crochets as we go around. So we're going to double crochet, so just wrap going in, pull through, pull through two and two, and then chain one again. So let's continue to do that. You need a total of eight. It is so important that you make sure you have your eight before you carry on to the next level because you will not be successful. And in actual fact, one of the samples that I did, I actually did seven and realized it a couple rows later. So I'm just carrying all the way around and I want to make sure that I'm counting the number of spokes. Now I've lost count. That's no big deal. I want to make sure anyway that it's the same. So I'm just going to count from the first one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And I'm going to chain one first and then go to the third one up in the beginning chain, not all the way to the top, and grab it and pull through and pull a large loop and let it fall down. And now we're going to begin the next part. Okay, so we're ready for the next part. We have our strings and I just want to make sure that they're accessible and easy for me. I'm not going to deal with those quite yet but just wait and just see what I'm doing. So this is where we've slip stitched right into this post. I want you to come into this gap right here, right next to the ring but in between this space here. And we're going to grab a yarn. Now I recommend that you have an extra long tail on this because you want to secure it into position because you'll notice that the knot will actually come out through the front and by leaving an extra long tail when you go to fasten it at the back that you'll be able to pull it through and hide the knot really easily. So what I need you to do is just come in from the front just in the ring and out through the post. Okay? So just in the ring and out through the post. And I want you to grab the yarn and pull through. So now it's quickly attached. To make it easier for you, put that straggler that is coming in front, pull it through the hole. You have to start on the front. You can't start on the back. Trust me. You can try but it won't work. So now we have this done. We are going to chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Where have we seen that before? 
this round and this round are absolutely identical using the same ring. So we're going to double crochet but we're going to move over in between these two posts right there. Coming in and double crochet. Then we chain one. Okay, moving to the next post. You know, in between the next post. Okay, and then chain one. So if we had eight going on the green, this means that we should have eight spaces left for this, this pink that's going in. So chain one. And what I really want to notice as we're coming around, we're coming close to those green strings again. We're gonna have to deal with that before we close off this final round. It's not a big deal, but just watch how I do it. So I'm just chaining one in between all of the double crochets that I'm sealing around the ring. So this is where it's joining. So this post here is the one I need to pay attention for. So I'm still gonna go one more over without having to deal with anything. Just go like I normally have been. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. But before I finish, I need to make sure that I bring the loop forward, but I bring the working string from the green also forward. That string has to be in the forward position or it'll not join the other round properly. So I have done my double crochet. All I need to do is just chain one and then I attach it here to the third chain up. One, two, and three because remember we chain four. So pull it through and through, pull a nice loop and there you go. So this is what it looks like at this point. So you can see that they're really not sitting in each other yet. They're just attached right at the very beginning and this is the only place that they're attached. Okay, so let's begin the green again and the green has been pulled forward. We have the string going to the yarn ball in the forward. See how it's underneath and it's between this gapping space? If it's not in between there, you're in trouble. So you'll have to take it out and re do that to make sure that it is through. Make sure you check before you start the revolution because you'll have to redo it. So we're going to pull the loop back onto the hook just like so. So we're pulling the green onto itself and we have the loop but the problem is is that we cannot operate within this first post. We have to move into a gapping space that is right beside it inside the green only. So we're just going to go into the gapping space and pull through and through. So let's slip stitch. So now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And then what we need to do is then put another double crochet into that same space. Just like this. So the problem that we have right now is that I have it out of the way but the pink is where I've joined it is the next one right here. So we have to move that loop forward and the working string forward before we continue at this point because if you don't it's going to not be aligned properly. So I'm just pulling it forward out of my way and here's the secret. When you ever you have the number of double crochets you will have the same number of chains. So there's two there one and two. Remember that chaining counts as one double crochet. So now we're going to move to the next green. So the next green is right in behind. I'm just kind of forcing things open. And so do you see how you're on the left side of this green right here? You want to make sure you're on the left side of this post here as well. And you want to force that out through the pink. So we're just going to double crochet. Just popping it out. And double crochet twice in that same gap space. So you notice that we skipped right over that first double crochet over there just to keep the spiral going. And we know now that this is the yarn tails working for the pink. They're in front. They are locked into position so that they're ready for when I need it next. We're going to chain two. And again there's the next green. We just want to come to the left side of it. Pop it out into the, there's the gap. And then chain two. Okay, so there's the next green end. Let's pop it out. So what this is doing is it's forcing the pink to take a back seat. You'll notice that the pink is disappearing because it's sitting on the back. So one and two. In through the green. Pop only the green out. Okay, and then one and two. Again, look for the green. Pop it out. 
So it makes it really easy to begin to do this that you're not really looking for any stitches. You're just looking for gapping spaces. One and two. And you've already dealt with the pink at this point. So you can go all the way around in this. It's whenever you hit over top of another color that's being changed out. That's when you have to make sure that these yarn strings come forward. So one and two. We're looking for the next. And there is two there. Okay, and you can see you got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight, and then chaining two to finish it off. And we join it to the top of the third one there. We make sure we just get the green only and pull a generous loop, like so. And now we're ready for pink. So the pink is falling out through the front. There's the loop, and there's the yarn strand coming to the yarn ball right here. And we're going to pull everything tight again to itself. We're going to do the exact same thing we just did with the green but with the pink. Now here is where the green is and basically we're working in this direction. We're coming back around so we're going to deal with this one when we come back around but not right yet. Yet It's when you have to go over it that's when you deal with it. So just like we did with the green is that we're not ready to go out of this one here because we never start in the first one. We always slip stitch over one. So we're just slip stitching the gap and going over and then chaining three. One, two and three and then we come into that same space just the pink and now we're forcing the green to take a back seat right where those gapping spaces are. Now remember what I said when you have two double crochets you're going to have the same amount of chains so it's two and that exists for all revolutions of this particular project. So let's uh, begin to double crochet. We're looking at the pink. We go toward the left of the gap space. Okay, so go to left, two double crochets. Okay, and now we're going to chain two. And again, look for the next pink, slip in behind, pull it forward, and then do your double. Okay, chain two, coming in, pull it out. And then chain two, two double crochets. The trick is to really watch those first strings that are coming out that for the next color. Um, I did uh, a few samples and I kept forgetting that and you re do regret it because you, you basically run back into it and realize that you haven't dealt with it so you got a frog. And uh, we all love frogging I'm sure but um, if you can avoid it, great. So again one, two. Now the fabulous thing about this particular project is that two lines are always the same or two rounds are always the same. You're just using the opposite color and it makes it very easy to remember. So here is where they're joining. So we can still go into one more space before we have to deal with that. So we're still going into the pink. Just look where that green is starting and that's where you have to start having to jump over. And that's when you have to deal with the strings. So we're about to go over this area here. So I'm going to move the working strand and the loop forward and then chain two and just simply join to the beginning uh, chain of three. So just to the chain three portion of it or actually the top of chain three because uh, that's where you were. So let's just join it with a slip stitch just like so and pull a generous loop and now we're ready for the next revolution. Do you see how the knot came forward in this? So if you can pull it behind when we go to fax, uh, affix it you can see it looks a lot better. So let's begin the next revolution. So we're about to start the green and we're just, I put my hook in the green and I'm going to pull it nice and tight just like so. And so remember in the rules that I already said is that we are going to make sure that we deal with this properly as far as um, we're never going in that first one. So we have to slip stitch to the second to pull it through. So just pull it through and now we're over top of the second. Actually I'm not very comfortable with that. Let me try it again. Just like so. So we're ready now and we're going to chain three, one, two, and three. So that counts as going over this post and then we're going to put two double crochets again in this chaining space of the green only forcing that pink in behind. 
So now we have basically three double crochets in a row. Now we're about to hit this pink here because that's where we stopped. So we're gonna pull the pink forward so it's out, so it's in front so I can trap it. So now that we have three double crochets, we're going to have three chains. And then we go to the next green. So in the next green, we automatically always skip the first one, double crochet into the second. So just going in, pop it out. And then we're going to put two more into the chain space of the same green. And that pushes that pink in behind for that one there. So now, now you'll see that there's gapping right now. That's because we haven't done the red in the same amount of quantity. So it's, that's, or the pink. And that's why you see the gaps right now. So if you have that, don't worry about it. So one, two, and three. And we just immediately skip the first green and go to the second for a double crochet. Again, popping it forward. And then come into the gapping space for two more. So by moving into the gapping space, you're creating the spiral. So one, two, and three. And then again, the green, skip the first one, and go to the second for double crochet. And then again, into the gap. Okay, and then chain three. first one, or sorry, you skip the first one, go to the second as always. Uh, when I first started this pattern, I was like having to read the instructions for everything. And then I realized that if you know that there's a commonality of, of your stitches, it's really easy. So then one, two, and three. And again, skip the first one, go to the second. And then two more into the gapping space. Okay, one, two, and three. Go to the second. And then the gapping space for two more. And then one, two, and three. Skip the first one. And then go to the second. So you never ever want to go around a, a pink at the same time in the back so you can see what's happening. So okay and then we're just going to join it. So one, two, and three. And we're going to join it to the top at the beginning of the chain three. And then pull a generous loop. and leave it be and let's bring on our pink again. So let's bring on our pink again and we're just gonna tighten everything back up and bring the pink on to your hook. Just like so. If it's twisting, just un make sure you untwist it. Okay, so this is just like the same rules of the green. We never start off in the beginning and we're just going to move over and go to one over and just slip stitch and then chain three. One, two, and three. And again in the pink like you did with the green, simply just put in two more double crochets into that pink space. Okay, so you're pushing that green now backward. So now you have three double crochets. Remember the chain three counts as one of them. So one, two, and three is your chain. So the chains equal the amount of double crochets. Immediately skip the first one and go to the second. And again, pop that green back and then two more. So continue to do that same thing. I've already done it with green. I won't do it with pink. Just continue to just same this, do the same revolution all the way around. And when we come back, I'll show you what to do next. So I'm continuing to do the pink and I'm going to run into the green. So I want to make sure that the loop and the working yarn are in front before I just chain my three across and slip stitch to finalize that off like so and then I pull a nice big gorgeous loop and let it fall. So now the green is in front ready for me to go. So let's start on with our next revolution. Let's start on our green. We're just going to put the green back on and I'm just going to pull everything nice and tight again. And now this time the green, you can see that it goes up from one to two 
to three. So that means that we have four in this revolution as we go around. So let's begin. We never start off in the first one. We have to slip stitch to the second one over to start us and then chain three. One, two, and three. So now this time we have another double crochet to do first. Push that pink in behind and then we're going to put two double crochets on this gapping space of the green. So you know how to do this already. So it becomes really easy. Now this pink is the next one because that's where it's joining. We're going to bring the pink forward and out of our way so that we can begin to do that. So, th so the pink is in the front now and we're simply just going to chain four. One, two, three, four because it equals the amount of double crochets. We come over here and we have three but we skip the first one and immediately double crochet into the second. And we get the next one double crochet that's there and then we're going to go into the gapping space of the green. So just popping it out, pushing that pink in behind. Okay, so now you have four. So one, two, 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 and three, and four. We just skip over and we skip to the skip the first one, go to the second of the green, and get the next one, double crochet and then the gapping space of two. And continue to do that all the way around. And remember that you have four double crochet therefore there will always be four chains. And this is what it looks like in the back now. You can really start seeing that the oven coil is starting to really form. And this here is that large string that I talked to you about in the very beginning. So continue to do the green all the way around. We'll meet back up and I'll get you started on the pink. When you get all the way back around you of course you're going to chain your four and then come to the top at the beginning of the chain three and pull a nice generous just slip stitch and pull a nice generous loop. Just like you see. Okay, so we're going to bring our pink back and our pink, now there, there's four here and we see that we follow up one, two, three and we have yet to do the fours and so we pull the loop again, pull it nice and tight and we want to begin again. So again, we don't start in the first one. We immediately slip stitch to the second one over so that we're not in the first and then chain three, one, two, and three and then come and double crochet into the next double crochet that's available and then the next gapping of the pink we are going to put in two double crochets. So it's exactly what we've done with the green. As I promised you in the very beginning of this, um, this motif is that basically every two lines are the same as each other. They're just using the different colors. So you have four here. That means that we are going to chain four and then come into the next pink. Never go into the first one. Always to the second. And we're going to double crochet that one, the next one, and then the next two. Like so. So continue to do that with the pink all the way around. When we come around we're going to run into this green again. So I'll meet you back at that point to show you again. It, just to give you a quick reminder. So coming all the way back around again make sure these green are in front before going across with four double crochets or four chains in order to seal the deal with a slip stitch like so. So we're going to start the next uh, revolution coming up and the next revolution so we have in both levels now we've completed one, two, three, and four. So basically everything is in line. So the next uh, revolution what we're going to do is that we're going to start with the green. So I'm just going to let the pink fall forward. I just automatically let it fall forward. I've done enough of these samples that it just naturally happens. I want to pull this loop back up. So here's the secret. Both of these revolutions should have five on and that's where the secondary color which will be pink in this case will end. The final color of, of going to a sixth round so that there's six is actually the edging which is round number 11. So let's uh, begin to do this one here is that we're going to just slip stitch over one. Remember we never begin in the beginning like the beginning uh, double crochet and then chain three. One, two, and three. And then we come and look at the stitches and we got three or sorry three all together but there's two more left here. So two more left and of course we have to go into that gapping space that's in between. So get that green and we want to put two more double crochets there and that will give you a total of five in the group. 
like so. So now that there's five here, you'll chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And we're about to go over this pink. So put the pink in forward and then just immediately go to your next green. Skip the first one, always go to the second. And you want to get all of them that exist, all of the double crochets that exist. And then once you get those in, then you put two more on the, on the gapping chain of the green. And continue to do that all the way around. And when we come back, I'll do it again with the pink. And then that will conclude the whole rounds number one through ten once we get to that point. So I'll see you in just a moment. So I'm coming all the way back around now and I have chained my five. I'm just going to join it to the top of the chain three that I started with and pull up a loop like this. So let's uh, begin. I'm going to go back to the pink and there's five here. You can see that there's only four here so I want to make sure I have five of the pink too. So that you want both levels to have five and uh, then that will conclude off around number ten. So to begin again we are just going to not go into the first one. We're going to slip stitch to the second like this and then chain three. One, two, and three. Let's grab the double crochets that are in a row. There should be three. And there is. It's fabulous. And now we're going to go into the gapping space of the pink. See how it's getting bigger and bigger that I can pull that more and more. I told you in the very beginning that starting off is a little like a little tense but as you get bigger it gets easier and easier with this particular one. So we want a total of five. Therefore there should be five chains. One, two, three, four, and five. And then go again. Skip the first one. Go to the second. Make sure that green stays in behind and just continue to do that all the way around. When we come back I'm going to show you how to finish off. I, I said in the intro that I would do all 42 of the same. So I'm going to show you how to finish it off earlier so that you can do that and then come back and then restart again. And if you prefer to do all of each one um, I'm going to show you tips on that too as well. So we're almost all the way back around and again I want to pull that green in front. You cannot forget that. So don't ever get lazy about that. So we want to chain five. One, two, three, four, and five. And this concludes off round number ten. I want to join it to the beginning of the top of the three. So what we have to do now is that we have to eliminate the, the color B out. In this case it is the pink. So we want to eliminate that out. So I'm just going to grab my scissors and cut. And I want to deal with this right away. And so regardless of which motif you're working with all of the, the color B has to be removed at this point. So I just pull the loop through and I'm going to just grab a little darning needle because I really if I'm going to do such a fabulous afghan I'm going to do it right right off the bat and just do it in the moment and just slip through the chain. Now this chain will end up behind the next layer. So you can safely go through this chain and it will never be seen unless you're turning the afghan over of course. And I would go back and forth three times. And therefore it won't have to fall out. I also want to deal with um, the center just after I finish this one. So I've gone back and forth three times. Done. Okay so it's easy peasy. You can barely tell where I've stopped and started. Well <laughs> pretty close. And I want to just turn it over. There's the back and I want to grab this. Now when I go to tie this into the back I want to make sure that it doesn't pop out through the front so you see the knot coming out through the middle just like this. I want to make sure when I tie it backward I'm just going to put on my darning needle again. I just want to make sure that it's just popping out. Okay so I just want to make sure that when I go in I'm just going behind a few strings just to secure it that will never be visible on the other side. Okay and I want to make sure when I pull it it pulls it so it's out of the view of the main center of the circle. I just want to make sure it's secure. It's already actually technically secure. It's just you just really just want to get rid of it so it doesn't it's not visible. Okay and then here is the green string from where we started. So I want to cut that and I want to cut that. Okay so if you wanted to continue on with your motif the green is ready to go. But in my case what I want to tell you is that if you're going to do all 42 at the same time I would recommend that you would do the following. 
So the green is popping out and if you're gonna do all of the 42 in rows number one to 10, just make sure that you just secure it off safely because you're probably gonna use the same color on the next one, right? So you can't have like 42 balls of yarn just waiting to be done. So what I would recommend is just to finish it off like you would normally would and you can either, it doesn't matter exactly where you start on these as long as you start with the green again. So all I'm just going to do is that I'm just going to fasten this green in so that it's permanently hidden so that I can start safely at any point or any uh, particular green on this revolution in order to do it. So it's just a, I think it's a quicker way to do this than it is to do all of the motifs from start to finish from rounds 1 to 11 uh, because you'll, you know, round number 11 is different for six of them so it just makes it easier. So now that I've done a nice job I'm securing it in, I'm basically ready to go and this is ready for round number 11. So that completes off rows number 1 through 10 for the motif for all of them and there's the front and there's the back. So let's move along to your next part of the tutorial because now it's time to start doing the finishing of round number 11 for all six. So now it's time to transform into motif number one. So we have everything from rows number one through 10 right here but we need to create the points in order to attach the neighbor. Uh, motif number one attaches to all eight sides regardless of if it's a square or octagon. I'm going to show you how to do it and actually motif number one and two are very very easy and uh, you can see and there's pictures available online for you to be able to see this as well. So basically when you've started this one if you went from start to finish the green will be over so you have to slip stitch one over and basically where I'm about to join it will help you as well. So let's uh, begin to do the corners for motif number one. So let's begin. I'm going to be joining on my new yarn. I'm just going to create a slip knot to do so and if you have just started this one and you're continuing along through you don't want to do what I'm doing of, of doing all 42. You will be in the first one here where you join with the slip stitch. You need to come and slip stitch to the second one over. Okay so even on the exterior you're still moving over by one and you want to join it. So if you're doing this you just want to join it and then chain three. One, two, and three. Even if you slip stitch you still need to do that chaining of three. We're going to double crochet into the very first one here and I'm just leaving my straggler down on top of the line so that I can trap it into position. The next one is that where we're going to start creating the corner. So to create the corner you're going to double crochet into the next one and then you're going to chain three. One, two, and three just like so. And now we want to come into that very same stitch with the double crochet. So it's like a V stitch really. So they're into the same and now we have, we go into the next double crochet and into the spacing. So the green space there. See how that's continuing to rotate around? So essentially each corner is going to have three in a row Okay, just like this, three in a row, but the two middle will be together. We're now going to immediately jump in behind, okay? And what I recommend, see this loose string? I would pull it through that pink on the underside and still continue it to trap it as you play on this green string. So we're immediately going to jump on this green string and we're going to put four double crochets around that green string. And this is going to sit in behind of the pink for four double crochets. So here is the repeat pattern. We immediately are now going to come into the front of the green. So we're just immediately going to jump over. We never come into the first one. We're going to go into the second for a double crochet and we're going to go into the next one for a double crochet. So there's the two out of three. So here the double crochet into the next one, chain three, one, two and three and double crochet into that same one to create that V stitch idea. And then double crochet into the next one. Okay so you have three on this side. You only have two here. That means you have to come into the gap. And then jump in behind. So just immediately come to the green and put four double crochets back there. and continue that same patterning going all the way around. I'll review it one more time. 
because we're here and might as well do it. So we're gonna come in and jump into the front. So we're gonna skip the first one, come into the second for double crochet. We're going to double crochet into the next and the next one's like a V stitch. So you're gonna put in a double crochet, chain three and double crochet into that same one and then double crochet in the next and then the gap. I wanna make sure I actually get the gap though. <laughs> I got into a chain there and then we come in behind so just fold that up front and four double crochets in behind. So continue to go all the way around and meet you back up in just a moment. We'll finalize off this one and then we have more motifs to analyze next. And this is what we have so far. When you get all the way back around you're gonna end up in the behind and you're just going to slip stitch to the top of the beginning chain three uh, that you started with and you can just uh, fasten it off nicely. But you can see now you have all eight sides like a stop sign and it's just really easy and this one it really is a no brainer. One motif one and two are very uh, similar. So, the, so now let's compare this is motif number one just like you see here and here is motif number two. So the difference is is that where these pinwheels are ending up and you can see here that the pinwheels on this side are ending up in the two corners where this pinwheel is right in the direct middle of the two corners and that's the difference between one and two. So let's finish off and let's try motif number two, round number 11. So let's begin, we're doing motif number two and motif number two has a slight variation from motif number one. In motif number one, what we ended up with is that when you look at it, the pinwheels are in a different location when they're put together. So you can see that the pink pinwheel is in the center of the, the corners where the red, those are on the corners. And so essentially what we're doing in motif number two is that we're changing where the corners end up. And so basically we're going to transform this sample here into B motif number two. So all the motifs right now, they are ending up on row 10 which is the finalizing of of the final B color and now we're just gonna bring on the green. Now if you left on the green and you wanted to do it all the way from the start, to begin all you're just going to do is that you're just gonna bring on your yarn and it doesn't matter where you start um, if you're joining on your yarn. Obviously you're gonna start if you haven't uh, on if you have not taken off your yarn, you're gonna just start wherever you are. So if you're gonna start and you haven't removed yarn, you're just going to slip stitch over for the, to the second. In this case, we're joining yarn, so we're gonna to join to the second one over to be in the position right away and we're going to fasten it on and then chain three. One, two, and three. And that counts as our first double crochet. So let's begin. We're going to double crochet into the next three double crochets that are here in the green. And we are going to put that straggler down on top so we can hide it into position so that you'll never see it. And you have your three. So again, this is different than motif number one. Now this straggler, what I would do is just pop it out through the back and so then you can operate it and put it around this chain here so that it can get stuck. So what we're going to do now is that the corners will end up in the top of the B when you looked at the beginning one of motif number one, essentially B ends up in the middle but what we're going to be doing on this one in motif number two is that it ends up in the end of the color B. So let's uh, begin, we're going to just simply just turn it forward and just grab this chain that's in behind and essentially we wanna put three double crochets in, one, two and three followed by chaining of three. One, two and three and put three more double crochets back on that same chain line. So that's pretty easy isn't it? So let's just uh, review again. So we're just gonna now come to the front so I just see how I just push that back. I'm now gonna come to the green. I never go into this first one. Always go to the second and I'm just gonna double crochet the remainder that's left and there's only four of them here in the front. So in this one here we're not playing with that gapping space um, afterward like we have been on the other motifs. So we haven't been going another one here. So let's just turn it. We're just gonna just grab this back one here and we're gonna put three double crochets again. One, two, 
one, two, and three. And then chain three, one, two, and three. And again, back in. And you're going to do this all the way around. So this is another interior one where all sides are joining to a neighbor. And then once you have your three, just push this back, go to the second one over again, and then just double crochet into the next four. So let's uh, just uh, continue that and when we come back I'll show you what, uh, just uh, make sure that we fasten off and just wrap up motif number two. So now coming all the way back around and making sure that you do that final corner which is your final on the back side of the pink. And then once you get that done you can just slip stitch it to the top at the beginning of the chain three. And that will conclude off this one here. Um, again another very easy one here and when you uh, compare the difference of motif number one to two you can see that the pinwheels are in a different location as a result of changing where the corner is. So let's move along. We're going to do motif number three next. Welcome to motif number three. Motif number three is when the game plan starts getting a little more complicated. It beats number uh, one and two as far as um, has a lot more interesting sides. This is actually exposed to the outside so you have to look at this thing that there's actually five locations of where it attaches. So it attaches here, 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 here and here. And so then this here is on the exterior of the afghan right at the bottom and so you can see it's all rounded so there's no points left. So right here is the stitch marker where you're going to start. So this is where we would be starting with the green as we come around. So you'll notice here that where it's starting and where that first joining is is slightly off from each other. So we always think that when we're joining stuff that we're always on a corner. In this case for number three we're not. So when we go to do the repeat pattern you have uh, it says to repeat four times. So you have one, two, three and four and the game plan changes right over here as we begin to come around as we come down. So once we get to this side over here I'm going to follow along exactly with you step by step for this whole one. I'm not going to um, cut out at any point and so that we're going to get this done together. So let's uh, take our motif that we have right now and we're going to transfer this into motif number three. So let's grab on our green and if you have your green already attached let's just slip stitch over and if not I'll show you where to attach. So let's begin to do our green next and I'm just going to create a slip knot. If you have not unattached your yarn then you're just going to slip over one. It doesn't matter which one that we start with it, it really doesn't. So what we want to do is that I want to come into the second one. You, If you have not unattached your yarn you'll be in the first. You'll want to slip stitch over to the second one over and if you're attaching like I am just go to the second one just like this and just pull through and now let's chain three. So one, two, and three. Now I found motif number uh, three really interestingly. I was really struggling with motif number three. So I'm going to simplify it for you to make sense for you. So let's do that next. So let's begin and remember how I said to you that we're actually starting below the joining point. Because of that we actually have to compensate. There's more stitches here than there is in a typical corner. So when you think that you're about to start that you're screwing it up you're actually not. So what we're going to do in the very next one is that we're going to put two double crochets into the next stitch. And you would think oh that's not right. It's right. Just stick with me folks. So we're going to put two double crochets in and then the next stitch that we have we're going to put in like a V stitch once again. Now this one here is slightly different than the others and essentially what we're going to be doing is that we're going to put in a double crochet, chain two, not chain three, chain two only and just come into the same stitch for another double crochet. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to put a double crochet into the next one and a double crochet into the gapping space right here. Okay and this straggler I'm just going to uh, just pull it out through the back so that it comes out through the back and I would just want to make sure it goes around that, that green line. Now the backs are really easy on this part of this um, motif. They're not all the same. So what we're going to do when we have the corner, so we created the corner, so the ones that are on the behind when there's a corner in between each other they are different. So we're only going to put four double crochets in there. Now we've been doing that for motif one and two anyway 
but I'm just trying to emphasize to you that it's not always the same. Just like so. So now let's just review the pattern one more time because what we did here is not going to be the same that we're going to do here. So what we're going to do now is that we're going to just jump over to the, the first one here and we're going to put in a double crochet and another double crochet. So two in a row. The next one here will be like a V stitch and now this one here has the double crochet chain three, one, two and three and then back into the same one like so. And then double crochet into the next and then double crochet into the next gap. So this is essentially what you already know from a previous tutorial. See it's different down here because this is ending up on the exterior of the afghan. That's why there's only two and not three so it's not an excessive gap. In behind we want to put in four double crochets. So we're just putting it on to that green in behind. And we want to make sure that we're continuing to go all the way around to a certain point to the to the point where we need to get all of the sides in line. Remember I said that there's five points of joining so we have to make sure there's five points here. So we're now once we had the four in behind we're just going to come into the front. We skip the first one, go to the second for double crochet, go to the next one for a double crochet and then the next one is the V stitch. So it's a double crochet, chain three and double crochet into the same spot. There's your next corner and then double crochet into the next and then into the gapping space. We come in behind then the next one and we're putting in four double crochets back there. Okay, so you can see you have a join one, two and you're now almost uh, done the third and we're just still going to continue along. Okay, so we're now going to jump in front and we're going to do the, the second one over. Don't forget a double crochet, the next one double crochet and the next one is a V. So double crochet, chain three and into the same spot. There's your next corner and then we double crochet the next one and the next gap. Like there. So now you can see one, two, three. We're carrying along and the next one is in behind for four double crochets on that green chain line in behind. And then we come back to the front again. Again skipping that front uh, first one going to the second for double crochet. Let's go to the next one for double crochet. And there comes that V stitch now. Here's that double crochet, chain three and V stitch in or double crochet in and then the double crochet next and then the gap. Okay, so now you have one join, two join, three, four and now we're still on the, our, we're creating the fifth so we're still coming in behind and putting a four double crochet there. Just like that. And now what we need to pay attention to is that this is where the repeat pattern of four. It says to repeat four times. So one, two, three and four. And so now we have to look back at the pattern because this is when it starts changing to create that, that loop or that, that revolution that comes around the outside of the afghan. So let's go back to our pattern. So this is where the corners start to change a little bit. So here we go. We're going to double crochet into the first. Okay, we know how to do that. We double crochet into the second. We know how to do that and this time we're double crocheting into the third. This is the V stitch but this time instead of chaining that three we're now chaining only two, one and two. Come back into that same stitch like that. Okay so there's your V and then we double crochet the next one and then we double crochet two times. So two into this. And the reason for that is that this now is going to be a lot different as we go all the way for the remainder. So essentially this is what it looks like at this point. So we have the joining of one, two, three, four, five and now we're just going to come and sweep around it and do that exterior circle which is really really easy. Let me show you how to do that part. 
So once you get to this part it's just really easy is that we just on this green back here we're just going to put six double crochet. So six now. So we were doing four and now it's six. That's why I was saying to you at the beginning of this motif is that it's not always the same in behind. So this is starting to create the circling effect that's on the outside. So six. We jump forward. We always skip that first one. Come to the second and we want to double crochet ourselves across all of those lines that we see. But this time what we want to do is that in the gapping space we want to add another two in there. So essentially here's the here's the kicker is that I asked you to put in six in behind. You now have six in front as well. And so now let's go in behind again and we're going to add six. And those six double crochet. Okay, and now we come back to the front again. And again, we're still in the bottom, so we're just going to continue to maintain what we know. So we're going to go to the second one over, double crochet. All of them that we have here, there's four of them. And this time, this gapping space, we still add another two. One and two. And now we turn it back and we still have this space here and there's going to be six. So one and two, three, four, five, and six. And once you have your six, you're just simply just going to join it and fasten off and that would complete off motif number three. So essentially what's happening at this point, I'm just going to pull the loop, is that you have the five sides. So you have one, two, three, four, and five and then you see the rounded edge that would be on the outside of the afghan. And so the only difference between this one and the very next one that you have, which, which is the blue and white, is that the only difference is, is that where you're starting off with is slightly different from each other. So this one here is closer to an, a join where the other one was a lot farther down the join. And the difference also too is that the pinwheels are in a different location because of the where you've started the corners. So let's begin. We're going to do motif number four next. So welcome to motif number four just like you see here. Our starting point is closer to the exterior of the outside. So we have five points of attaching one, two, three, four, and five and then the exterior of the afghan has a rounded surface like this. When we're starting off with we're more deeper into this rounded off surface than we are closer to the corner. On the first afghan or on the motif number three you can see that our starting point was a lot closer to the, to the point than it is in this one here. And so then that's the basic difference because we want to have those wheels turned. So let's uh, grab our sample and if you have not unattached your yarn then uh, basically you're going to slip stitch over one and if you have unattached your yarn like I suggest you, you probably should then I'd recommend you obviously have to come into the second one. So we skip the first one. It doesn't matter which one we pick. It uh, just just pick one and essentially we want to attach it. So bring it on like that and then join one, two, and three and let's begin reviewing this pattern together. Now starting this one off is actually really easy. So essentially we've just joined to the second one. We have three more double crochets to go and just keeping that straggler on top of the line so we can bury it. We're just going to double crochet into the next three that are available. And once we get our three in we're going to add two more double crochets to the first gapping of the green on the front side of it. And what I recommend, pull this string through, pull it through the back so then it can be really well hidden and just kind of join it with this line. So just kind of just light on top there so you can trap it into position. We're now going to go move in behind the pink and this is what you do next. Okay, we now want to come in to the back area here and what we're going to do here is that we're going to put in four double crochets to start with. One. It's an unusual start 
just got to bear with us is that we're not really technically at a corner yet. So you just have to bear with it. We're gonna create our first corner in just a second. So we have four double crochets. We're now only gonna chain two, one and two, and then we're gonna put three double crochets into that same spot. So there is technically your first corner. Just like you see. So now we're gonna jump around to the front side here and basically we're going to skip over the front and we're just gonna come into the second just like we have been and we are going to put in three double crochet or the double crochets in a row. So we're coming to the second and then just double crochet what you see there. So there's gonna be four total. Just like you see. And now once you have your four in there, you're not gonna add anything to this gapping space at any point. And now we're just gonna come immediately to the in behind and we're gonna add in more stitches. So now we're gonna add more in behind and we're just gonna put three double crochet in. And once you have your three in here, you're going to chain three, one, two, and three, coming into the same one. Okay, so now we're just gonna come back and now we're gonna jump on the front side of the green. So the green, there's only gonna be four double crochets. So we immediately skip that first one and come to the second and double crochet into everything. We're not adding anything into that gapping space at this time. And we just now come back and do three double crochets again. and one, two, three chain and three double crochets into that same one to create another corner. So we wanna create all the sides that we need in order to attach the neighbor before getting around to that bottom part where we're gonna sweep around. Once you get your three in there, we're gonna come back to around to the front and double crochet the four that are in the front. You see? So we wanna keep an eye on how many corners we have going. So we wanna keep, so we wanna keep an eye on how many flat edges we have. We have only one so far. This is part of the bottom so it doesn't count. So one, two, and we're now in a partial over three. And we wanna make sure that we are keeping an eye on that so that we can, uh, basically have the perfect amount of edges to work with because we're gonna be attaching it to the neighbor. So three double crochets in behind and we're now going to chain three and then three double crochets in that same chain space in behind. And then we jump around to the front again. So just come back into that front of the green, double crochet the four that are there And then let's go into the back again. So just flip it over and three double crochet. Okay, chain three and three double crochet. And then we wanna review again, make sure we have the number of count that we need. And essentially now we have one, two, three, four. So we still need a total of five so we can still keep going. And it, it's said to repeat, I think four times anyway. And uh, this just helps you visualize it even better if you can actually figure it out what the edges are. It saves you from having to count stitches. Okay, you get your four in there and then in the back again. Okay, and there's three double crochet. So we have our flat side one, two, three, four, and this is uh, the partial of the fifth. And this is where the game plan changes. So we're gonna start off with our three double crochets, but this time what we wanna do is that we wanna chain two next, and then we're gonna put in four double crochets. So not three, but four, because now we're gonna start working down toward the bottom, uh, sweeping around. And what we already did with the last motif, we're gonna be doing the same with sweeping it all around. So essentially what we're going to do this time is that we're just gonna come to the front, skip the first one, go to the second, 
and this time instead of just finishing off on the four that you see you want to make sure that you put another two into this gapping space right there to fill it out. This is what makes it rounded off at the bottom and then we turn it over and let's just get this back loop or this back chain and we're going to put six double crochets there. So there's six back there. Okay and so now we come back to the front, skip the first one, go to the second and so they're all going to get one double crochet. So that will give you a total of four and then you want to add another two into this gap. And again we're not done yet so we just got to flip this and get this last gap and there will be six double crochet back in there. Okay there's four and five and six. And once you have your six in here just join it to the top at the beginning of the chain three and fasten off nicely in order to complete that. So essentially this is what we have going on. I'm just going to pull the loop to be generous and all, all we've just done now is that we have your one side, two, three, four and five and then the bottom just all sweeps all the way around. So this doesn't look like it's, it's rounded off but you just got to give it a good a few stretches and then once it's attached it will actually pull and be in alignment properly. So you have one, two, three, four and five and that completes off this motif number four. And welcome back and this is motif number five and we're about to start this. Motif number five and six there's only two of them required of each. Um, they are the corner uh, cornerstones I guess of this afghan and two of them are on the right and two of them are on the left. And essentially what's happening here is that these are only joined at three spots. One, two and three and then this whole filled out area. So if you've done motifs three and four with this whole filled out area you already know how to do that. So it's just a matter of starting off right. So you'll notice here that this here is the starting point that we're starting before the first corner and then we're going to make our way around and then begin to do this whole process together. So let's uh, just get this started right now. Let's grab up our sample. If you've decided to leave on your yarn you're just going to slip over one and if you're just joining it like I am we're just going to create a slip knot and join it to any one of the second double crochet. So just into the same color and we're just going to join it. Pull it through and through and then chain three. One, two and three and let's review our instructions together. Okay let's uh, begin and we're essentially just going to we have our chain three and so we're going to put two double crochets into the very next stitch. Now it doesn't seem like this makes sense but in actual fact this is part of the transitioning of going from the rounded outside of the corner of the afghan to actually going to adjoining part. So you just have to trust in it. So what we want to do then is that we're going to the next one is a double crochet but it's like a V. So you're going to double crochet chain two and double crochet into the same stitch. Okay, so there's your first corner. We're going to double crochet into the next and double crochet into the gapping space of the green. And that kicks that off. Move this green if you've joined it just move it in behind and you can put it around the chain so that you can really hide that into position. So let's move along to more of this pattern. So let's uh, begin. We're just going to take this green in behind and we're going to put four double crochets in there. So this is kind of like how you've done corners already in the other motifs depending which one you were working on. So there's only going to be four on here and we're essentially then just going to come back to the front. Just get that straggler out of the way and come to the second one over and you're going to double crochet and double crochet into the next and the next one is going to be a double crochet but it's going to change the game plan is going to change this time. It's going to be double crochet chaining three instead of two so chaining three and then back in to the same one. And then double crochet to the next and double crochet into the next gap space. Okay the one in behind is the same. It's going to be four double crochets. That's pretty easy right? And so we're just keeping an eye on the number of corners that we are producing. So we got one 
or sorry this is an edge so we have one and so let's uh, create our second one here this corner and we're coming to the second one over double crochet double crochet the next and the third one over is going to be the V again and so it's double crochet chaining three and double crochet into the same hole and I think I dropped my stitch there and I did okay and double crochet into the next and double crochet into the next gap space and now let's come in behind again so we're going to put four double crochet there so actually motifs five and six are actually really simple because there's not as many um, edges to worry about as far as counting because once you get those done then it's easy sailing the rest of the way around as you go all the way around so let's uh, just look at it again so we have one and two this is the third so we're going to be um, just coming around the corner in just a moment so I just want to review the pattern once again so we're just starting to turn the corner again so uh, here we go we have the edge edge and we're about to turn a corner but this time this corner is slightly different we want to start off in the very beginning and do the first two as normal and we do the third one okay and this is going to be the V and where we're joining to our neighbors and so this time it's only chain two and we come back into the same and then we double crochet into the next and now this one on the gap we put in two just like you see here so therefore you have just now completed your three edges and so now we're going to come around and do exactly what we already have done in the other ones is that the back ones will always have six double crochet around those that chain this is four and five and six and we come back come up to the second one over and we double crochet ourselves across there's only four there but what we're going to do is we're going to add two more in to the gapping space once we get there okay so our four are in but we're going to add two more on the edge in the gap so we're making this now appear to be a circle so coming around and the next thing we put six double crochet three and four five and six coming back to the front come to the second and we're just filling them in with double crochets so these exterior ones are not that bad as long as you know where to stop and start your flat edges and once you get your four in there put in two more double crochets in that gap space make sure it fills out bend it forward and put in six double crochets in the back this is three four and six okay and bring this back skip the first one and double crochet yourself all the way across that green there will be a total of four and then into the gap space again bend it forward see this one really is no brainer it's just that first starting is make sure you get it right that was four and five and six bring that back second one over okay you get all four in put two more on the edge of the gapping space and then we flip it one last time this is the last section and there will be six in there
and then there's your six and simply just join it to the top at the beginning chain of three to conclude off the, and let me just pull that off. So what we have here at this point is that we have a fabulous circle and essentially there's your flat side, there's a flat, there's a flat and then it's just rounded all the way around to make this a perfect corner. So that completes off uh, motif number five and we have motif number six next. And motif number six is very, very similar to this but our starting point is slightly different so that the pinwheels are in a different location. Welcome to motif number six and this is what it's gonna look like at this point. And motif number six is joined in three spots. One, two, and three three and then the remainder of it just swoops around. I haven't actually, this here is where we've started it. So it swoops all the way around and our starting point is way far, farther away from this first corner and because of that it just allows the, the project to turn a lot better. So basically you have a different uh, section or a different point with these particular pinwheels. So without further ado, if you have unattached your yarn, we're gonna reattach it back on and if you have just left it on, you're going to slip stitch one over. So if you're reattaching it doesn't matter where you're going as long as you're the second one over. You know, let's reattach now and just pull it through and join three. One, two, and three and let's review the pattern now. To begin we're going to start double crocheting and we're just going to get these double crochets in position with what you already have. So we're just double crocheting ourselves along and once we get to this first gapping space right here, we're going to put two more into there. Now this straggler has just been left on top so I want to just kind of push it in behind and make sure that it looks like it's joining part of this so I can just continue to go around. So let's set begin. We're going to do this next section in behind and essentially we have to create um, a corner. So to do that, we're going to put in four double crochets first. So one, two, three, and four. And now we're going to chain two. So one and two. And then we come in and then we put in three more double crochets into the same spot. So we've started around the outside of the bottom before the corner. So now the corner is in position just like you see. So let's uh, begin. We are going to work our way across and this is what we need to do next. Okay, this one is a little bit easier than motif number five. So we're just gonna come into the front, the second one over and we're going to double crochet uh, the first or all of the, the four that you see. And then we're going to jump in behind. So we're not adding anything extra. We're just maintaining that and then we're just gonna jump in behind and we're going to make another corner of three double crochet. And then chaining three. One, two, and three. And then three double crochet in. So that's really not a hard thing to do. Once you have that in, we wanna keep an eye on it. So that was actually your first edge. So we're gonna come back to the front, second one over and we're going to put in four double crochets in a row. And that's exactly where the green is. We're not adding any more, any less. And we come back and just flip it and get that chain in behind. And again, we're going to put three double crochet, chain three, and three double crochet. Very good and we're gonna come back to the front and we're gonna put in another four double crochets in a row. And I wanna just re-inspect again, making sure I have the number. It says to repeat so many times but it's sometimes better just to double check just to give it a visual. So we have one, two and this is about, we're about to transition so we need to go and review the instructions because we're about to do the final corner before going and sweeping all the way around and we need to make sure that we're doing that final corner properly. So let's go back to the instructions. To do this final corner before we start that sweeping all around, we want to chain our <laughs> double crochet three times. And now this time instead of chaining three, we're only chaining two, one and two. 
and then essentially what we have to do is then four double crochets into that same spot. And this will then kick off the exterior just like to fill it in. See, so you have one, two, and three. And so let's do our exterior. So the exterior is always the same way. If you've done motif number five, this is the same thing that you already know. And essentially you're just gonna come into each one of the four that you, that you run into. Make sure you skip that first one, which I did. It's good. And essentially now what we have to do, once you get that first four in, this gapping space, you're going to add two more double crochets in. So that's easy, right? So we're gonna flip it forward and we're gonna put six double crochets on that back side, on that back chain. Three, four, five, and six. And then we come back to the front, second one over. We start collecting those double crochets and adding more in. And then once we do that, we add two more double crochets to this gapping space. Okay, coming back to the one in behind, we're gonna put six more double crochets back there. And there's five and six. And then we come back to the front and we put in, we fill this in again. So there'll be four filled in and then we're gonna add two more to that gapping space at the end. Just like there. And then we come back and get that one in behind again. So again, five and six are really not a big deal. They really don't have a lot of edges to really think about. So I think of the of the motifs, um, one and two are the easiest and five and six are the second. It's just three and four that is just uh, the ones you have to just really watch for. Make sure you're counting the number of rows. So you're coming back in the front, putting in four, And then again around the back for six. Okay, there's five and six. And so essentially now we just have to just create the create the slip knot or slip stitch over and essentially now you have the conclusion of round number six. And so you can see that you have the perfect number of sides. So just don't be confused that this is not a corner over here. It looks like it's a corner but it's not. It's just you know once everything gets stretched out you will see that you actually have one, two and three of your joining corners when you actually come right down to it. So let's move along. We're going to start the small motif next and that is the next one on our hit list. Okay, we're about to start the small motif. So this is the smaller one. You need 30 of these. There is the back just like you see here and this is the front. It's almost like the yarn is kind of like clutching in behind and grabbing onto it. Now you should know that color A is the main color which is the white and color B is the color that you're filling in. So you just have to determine which one that you want to start off with first. Now to match my last scheme, I've been using uh, the green as my color A and then pink as my color B. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Now this starting is almost identical to, it is actually identical to the way that you started off with the octagons. The only difference is that you, once you get this first revolution done, you're pretty well finishing off that color and then just completing the rest of these motifs together. So let's uh, begin and we're going to create a slip knot. And remember it never counts as one and we wanna chain four. So one, two, three, and four and coming into the very beginning and create the ring. So you've done that before and essentially this is what we need to do next. So the start is the very identical to the octagon so we're going to chain up four. One, two, 
three and four. That counts as a double crochet and chain one. And we're going to double crochet chain one uh, with a total of eight times. Going into the center of the ring all the way around. And we're using the main color. In this case it will be green. I found these ones whip off really quickly. So um, you know if you want to take a break from the large octagons and get more of these done it's a great way to take a, a break. But uh, I didn't find these ones a big deal at all. So I want to count these. So I got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. We chain one and then we join it to the third stitch up of the four. And then just join it like that and create the ring or create that loop just like we have been doing on the large octagon. And I'm going to get rid of this straggler at this point. So I'm going to grab my pink and I want to create a slip knot first. Make sure the tail is a little extra long so that you can secure it into position. Especially in these smaller ones you really do need that. So we want to take the green back and I want to take the yarn strands and put them forward and we want to look where that post is that we joined and the post that we joined is right here. So I want to move to this in the middle to the next gapping space right here. So I'm going to come up through the through the middle and then out like this and grab the yarn, the pink yarn and pull it through. We're going to attach it. Okay? And then chain 4. 1 2 3 and 4. And coming into the next one, what I'd recommend to is just grab this straggler and pull it toward the interior so it's out of your way and it'll just make it easier for you to follow along. So now that we have our four in there, we immediately come to the next gapping space, come in through the center, out through the space, and double crochet. Chain one, come to the next one. So wrap, next space, chain one. And we keep doing that all the way around. So I'm going to assume that you have been following the, the octagon because you know what you're doing at this point. So this is only the only revolution that you're going to have with this color but you thinking to yourself well that doesn't look like it makes sense. You have to go a revolution around with the green in order to get this to settle down into position. Again you need eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I still have that and again I can see that I still haven't put anything between there. Now before I finish this off what I want to do is I want to make sure that green comes in front. Okay both strands leading to the yarn ball and the loop before chaining one and joining it with the pink once again. And we are going to fasten off the pink at this time. So essentially we're just going to cut it and I'm going to pull the string like this. So this is the only, this is how quick you're going to use this, this pink up. And I want to make sure I kind of darn, darning needle in, into position at this time. I want to make it look good. It's important that it looks good because this afghan is going to be amazing. I'm just slipping it behind a few stitches. And I'm going to go three times. So that was one, two, and three. I also want to take care of that back part of that straggler that's coming out through. And my point being is that I want that knot that we created to be pulled backward so it's not in the visual when it's sitting down. So I'm just going to make sure I tug it and when I attach it in behind here just in some stitches I want to make sure that knot is not visible on the front side. I just want to tie it into position. And so now I've completely dealt with the pink. So that's game over for the pink. So now the green is in front and that's exactly where I needed it to be. And so this is what we're going to do next. So I'm just going to pull the green nice and tight back on and this is exactly what we've done with the octagon. So, we so now that we pulled everything tight we're simply now going to slip stitch to the, to the interior here. So there's a gapping space and we want to pull through and through. And this is exactly what we did in the large octagon. So now we're going to chain three. One, two, and three. And into the same space you are going to double crochet again. And after you do that you chain two. One and two. So now we come to the next one here 
and just like we've done in the octagon we just pull it forward and then double crochet into the next space. And then chain two. Okay, coming in to the next one, just pulling it forward. So essentially you're just pushing all that pink in behind to create the look of just being in the center. Chain two and then just come into the next one. This is actually take number two of this whole um, thing for me. I realized that when I got to the exterior that I forgot to chain two on some of these and it made a huge difference in the way that it looked. It made it look like a, <laughs> not a square let me tell you. So we're just continuing and look I just did that again. So after you get your two, chain two and then two double crochet. Okay, and then chain two. And then two double crochet in. And and chain two and then come to the next one and chain two and next and you should have a total of eight of these groups of two when you come all the way back around. Okay so we don't need to worry about the pink anymore so we're just going to chain two and just join it with a slip stitch to the top of the chain three that we started off with and let's verify our count. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight and we know that we're good to go for the next round. Okay the next round is our final for this and all we're just going to do is that we're going to chain up three. So one, two, and three. We don't slip stitch anywhere and we just double crochet back into the same spot in which we just join those in. And then we chain three. One, two, and three and we come to the very next one right here and we're going to double crochet twice. And then this gapping space we're going to put in two half double crochets to make it smaller because we're going to make a nice flat edge and then the next two are going to be single crochets each. So we've gone from double to half to singles as we've been doing all the way across and now we're going to get bigger as we head to the next corner. So we're going to do half doubles, two of them and then the next one is going to be a double. There's going to be two of them into that same one. We're going to create our next corner and then chain three and then come to the next stitch for two doubles to put in there to complete that corner. So you would think that normally these corners are usually on a gapping space but in actual fact they're actually on the edges of these. So let's, uh, we're going to half double into this gap. It's nice to see something different for a change for these afghans. You know it's nice to have something unexpected. Okay so two halves and then we're going to have a single and then two halves meaning half doubles. Okay and now we're going to create the next corner so we're just going to put in two double crochet into the same stitch, chain three and come into the next stitch for two doubles. We're in the gapping space again so that means that we're going to do halves, two halves. We're going to do two singles in a row here. And it's in the middle section. And then two halves again. And now we're going to go into our final corner. So the next stitch is going to be two doubles, followed by a chaining of three. And then two doubles. Ok 
Okay, we're coming to the final conclusion, the final one. And so the next one is halves, two of them. The middle is two singles. And then we have two halves. And the final, uh, second one of the half, we're just going to join with a slip stitch because you've already done the corner and we just join it to the top at the beginning, chain three, and we fasten off and that would conclude doing the motifs for the small. So let's review on how to join these together. Here is my two motifs and essentially I would have an octagon here, an octagon here, and this here would be in the middle. So you should end up with the same amount of stitches that are, are joining each other as you go along. So what I want to do is that I want to start on one side and what I'm doing here is that normally the string would be bigger because I would do more at one time is that I've created a slip knot on the end and I'm just going to come into only one side of the stitch. I'm not going to come into both sides and it'll be very obvious in just a moment and I'm going to come into the other side and I'm going to come into the same position and I'm just going to come into the one back side. So there's like two loops. I'm only coming into the, the front loop on this side and the back loop on this motif. And this is called what is called the invisible seam. So I just want to put it through that slip knot and then just join it nice and tight. So now I just want to go to the next stitch that's available. It's on the front, it's on the back loop on this one and it's going to be on the front loop of the next one that's over here. And I just want to pull it through. And this straggler I want to make sure I continue to trap it as I go. So now I come back to the front and go to the next stitch but on the back loop only. I come to the next one here on the other side and I'm leaving the straggler down on top. And this is a whip stitch by the way. And I just want to continue to trap these into position. And as soon as you get like a good section of this uh, straggler in, you don't need to worry about it. You can just kind of trim it. But what's happening is because you're only going into the back loop on one and the front loop on the other is that you are creating it so that your afghan will sit down perfectly without any raised edges in between. And it's a technique to do. You could also, if you felt inclined to do it, you could uh, um, single crochet them together but you should expect that you're going to have raised ridges. But if that's the look that you want to get then that's the look you want, right? So it's up to you. Your creativity is basically you know in your hands at this point of what you want to do. So eventually these stitches should match each other. Now if you're off by one, you know this is like I think I'm actually off by one. So what I can do is that I've come out here and I'm going to come back into the front here but I'm going to go back to that last loop I was in and this will pull this one stitch backward. And so again bringing this in alignment. It's a cheating technique but it works. And don't think we don't all do it. So you know like Mikey's breaking the rules again. So you're going to whip stitch yourself across. You want to get right into the sides here. Now I always just go into a chain when it comes to these corners. And uh, you can go into the whole gapping space if you wanted to. It depends on your look. And essentially what you would have done is that this would be a perfect join. And this is called an invisible seam so you can just see it there. And it looks great even on the rear side just like so. So this would be how you would complete uh, putting these uh, particular motifs together. And so essentially I would like do like a whole whack at one time and maybe uh, circling around this whole thing with these particular string. So I hope you've enjoyed this in-depth tutorial on how to do the peppermint throw. I think you're really going to love it. Once you get a hold of it, it is going to be amazing. And even the back is not too bad. It's kind of interesting. But you know what? You only live once and you might as well give it a try. Until next time, I'm Mikey on behalf of RedHeart.com as well as the Crochet Crowd. Stay tuned as we have more free ideas and patterns coming real soon. We'll see you.